Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 17th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Big ridge of high pressure protecting the Pacific Northwest, right smack dab in the middle of this image. Hawaiian Islands to our southwest. You can see the Great Lakes way off to our east. And what the infrared satellite imagery is showing is temperature. So when you see all these clouds moving around out there and they're colorful, that means the cloud tops are very cold, but it also can show those very cold temperatures at the surface across places like North and South Dakota and portions of Minnesota here, however. So yep, that's how the infrared satellite imagery works. Now taking a look at what was going on last night and this morning, well, we we're pretty socked in for some locations into the Willamette Valley. There's some patchy fog across Western Washington. Most of it is pretty clear this morning. However, there's a nice slug of fog there into the Strait of Georgia, some of the Salish Sea here as well across southwest BC. But look at the interior valleys of BC, Okanagan River Valley, eastern Washington, Oregon, back up into the foothills of some of the eastern slopes of the Cascades of Washington and Oregon are fairly well socked in here this morning, all the way through northeast Montana and portions of the Idaho Pan had a lot of fog to deal with. But if you are outside of that fog, Washington, Oregon, Coast, Vancouver Island, you are in for an extremely glorious day, including some of the high train of the Cascades, Washington, Oregon, all the way up into British Columbia. So here's the visible satellite imagery. You can kind of see the sun rising across the Pacific Ocean. And again, you can see where that fog is here this morning. You see Mount Rainier right there. And there's Mount Baker to the north of Mount Rainier. Um, also, check before you go if you're going off across the backcountry. There's some low avalanche danger out there as shown in the green, but there still is some moderate for some select locations. So give avalanche.org a look. And still dealing with some of these offshore winds. It was pretty darn right windy there yesterday and last night on through this morning. It's still fairly strong through the Columbia River Gorge. Bit of gusty wind here coming through the Stampede Gap. Um, otherwise, not too uh, windy there outside of some very isolated locations. But the offshore winds will be with us as we go all the way on and through Tuesday morning. Again, offshore flow, dry conditions, no precipitation probably until next weekend. But I will show you that potential for the pattern change here coming up in a moment. And one more look here at the infrared satellite imagery, kind of the forecast here. And you can see not much in the way of clouds over the next couple of days or so. So get out there and enjoy this very nice weather. Now, looking at what's coming here, this is going to be the mid-range first. I'm just going to show you the ridge kind of hanging out here as we go on in through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Kind of see the ridge dominating us until we go towards the end of the week. We're probably going to get a system that tries to slide in here out of the west as we go through Thursday night to uh, Friday. More on that here in a moment. But if you look at the artificial intelligence, we'll scroll through the next few days, not much precipitation to speak of. But by Thursday afternoon, we start to bring this next system in here. It's not particularly strong, but it is kind of a pattern change here. And we'll see and watch this over the next few days to see what that wants to do. And then the Gulf of Alaska may start to get a bit more active as we go towards the end of the month. More on that here in a moment. But I got to caution you because we've got a lot of people on social media that are sharing uh, weather model maps that they probably shouldn't. The European is on the left, the GFS is on the right. These are deterministic runs. And if we scroll off towards uh, the uh, next weekend time period, 186 hours out, starting to show this polar lobe trying to pay a visit here to the Pacific Northwest. And you might look at that. And if you didn't know we had better tools like the European artificial intelligence, you'd start getting excited and you start to share these with the general public and you'd be misleading them because this is very unlikely to occur. Occur, and I'll show you why here in a moment. Now, taking a look at the European the uh, European Ensemble mean, again, this is kind of the same thing. You can kind of see how this shows an Arctic air mass just dropping down across BC into the Pacific Northwest. And the Ensemble is not showing it nearly as progressive, but they do show some of that colder air getting into the central portion of British Columbia. However, you've got to go to the best performing model, the European Artificial Intelligence. We just went through this a few days ago where people sharing Arctic air maps and whatnot. And it turns out the Artificial Intelligence, to nobody's surprise who's been paying attention, was correct. And of course, that is backed up. And now the models continue to show it down the line a bit more. So let's see what the Artificial Intelligence models show. GFS on the right, European here on the left. There goes that polar lobe that the European deterministic and the GFS have been showing swinging into the area. Not even close. I mean, we remain under the ridge here. We would remain above normal that none of that cold air would get down into the region. And the GFS, I mean, it's a little bit stronger with that polar low, but still that, that is not close enough to bring any kind of an Arctic air mass into the lower elevations or any of that cold air mainly staying out across the Great Lakes off to our east. And then the Gulf of Alaska trophy, and it looks like it starts to get active as you go towards the end of the month. Now, if we take a look at the artificial intelligence ensemble mean, we'll put that into motion. There's that ridging polar low 
starts to you know try to take a swing at us but again not even close this isn't, this isn't anywhere close to what we would need for lower elevation snowfall in seattle portland or into southwest bc or anything like that i mean it's just not a very good setup for that. I mean, this can change a little bit. We could flirt with a little bit of colder air, but right now there's absolutely no sign of kind of any kind of an Arctic blast coming for the Pacific Northwest. Got to put that disclaimer out because I saw like three people sharing those kind of ridiculous maps. I hope that there, I hope that those maps are right. And I hope that this just makes some kind of dramatic shift here over the next few days and start to show Arctic air. But right now, the best tool we have, the artificial intelligence ensemble mean does not show anything of the sort. So if we look at a five-day running total of two-meter temperature anomalies, so this is over the next five days. You can see some of the inversions here across western Washington, western Oregon, and portions east of the mountains there as well. And you notice the cascades above normal during this time frame. We're scrolling out. Now we're between three and eight days out. Now we're between five and ten days out. And you can clearly see no sign of any chillier than normal air getting down into the Pacific Northwest other than just those inversions around. And this is not a good look for our snowpack here. It's really going to be hammered our snow and we're doing some melting and whatnot and we really need to keep that snowpack as we go on and towards the spring months we can keep our rivers like for the yakima basin out there we really need that snow to build up here so they're not dealing with water issues as we go on into the springtime not looking good right now there's always time to change that but it's something we'll be definitely keeping an eye on as we go forward and here's the next 15 days the gulf of alaska trough again starts to get rolling here at the end of the month it looks like but over the next 15 days it still does not mean a lot of precipitation here for much of the west coast of north america big time deficits coming up here and if we look at where we are since january 1st average minimum temperature departure from average uh, you can see we've been quite a bit is above normal here for much of the west look at montana and wyoming portions of idaho eastern washington oregon well above normal there's a percent of average precipitation since january 1st kind of a mixed bag here but you know a lot of below normal across washington oregon already and that's not going to get any help here over the next two weeks or so now, if we take a look at since the water year started, even with all the big precipitation that we did have and some of the flooding concerns, we're still kind of a mixed bag here is a lot of Oregon has been below normal. I mean, some of Western Washington still below normal since October 1st. See some of the Cascades, North Cascades, though, 150 to 200% above normal since October 1st. Check out the Patreon page and the Facebook page. Share with your friends and family. What else? Um, otherwise, I hope you guys are having a good day. Get out there and enjoy that very nice weather. We'll continue to watch that potential pattern change here over the next few days. And I will catch you guys in the next forecast.